welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Laura Young, who is here from the Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us on the show. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. You know, it's starting to heat up. I mean, this week is going to be very warm. So I'm sure that we're going to have some issues with mosquitoes and pests and things. So wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, the, the fact that it is warming up and what are some of the things that we should be looking out for? Well, really with this, uh, with the rain, recent rains we've had, and then the warm temperatures, we are seeing an increase in mosquitoes and, uh, you know, residents all throughout Orange County are really going to be impacted and they're feeling the biting pressure. And so we should really be aware of how mosquitoes breed and take those actions to be vigilant in removing those breeding sources, which is standing water. Is, is, this, is this year any different than any other year or do you see an increase each year? I mean, how do you, how do you know if it's going to be a bad year or not? <laughs> Well, the weather uh, is one component of it. So with the recent warm weather, as well as mixed with those recent rains and little smatterings of rains we've had, uh, we are going to see an increase in mosquitoes. The other element is that we have a new mosquito in town or a new worm mosquito since 2015. And that mosquito, which is our 80s, or people refer to them as an ankle biter, they're more aggressive, they'll bite, they prefer to bite people, and they are spreading, and we identified them in Laguna Woods Village, and they are spreading more rapidly, so that's how people are being impacted more by mosquitoes. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's an ankle biter. Is that because they only like your ankle? <laughs> They prefer to bite lower legs and ankles, but don't be fooled by them. They'll bite wherever they have access to. Gosh, that sounds awful. <laughs> but, you know, they're all always everywhere, and it drives us crazy. <laughs> so tell me some of the uh, diseases that mosquitoes can spread. So our traditional mosquito, which is our West Nile virus mosquito, can obviously spread West Nile virus. And that's the one we uh, see West Nile virus positive mosquitoes every year in Orange County and unfortunately human cases. Um, these newer mosquitoes can spread other diseases like dengue, chikungunya, yellow fever, which typically have been tropical diseases. Um, they have that capability. Luckily, we haven't seen any local transmission or any mosquitoes test positive for those diseases. But now we have the mosquitoes, so now we have to watch out for those diseases as well. Now, with COVID-19, I know there was some issues between, you know, animal transmission. Do we have to worry about that at all? Um, well, COVID-19 cannot be transmitted by mosquitoes, so that's the good news on that. Okay. Um, and with most mosquito-borne diseases, they have to be transmitted through a mosquito bite, and so you don't see animal to human transmission, but animals such as dogs are prone to mosquito-borne diseases as well, such as dog heartworm. Oh, okay. And so there's medication that we can give our animals for that, right? Absolutely. And being preventive is one of the key messages we always take away um, for all residents, both in preventing disease as well as preventing mosquito breeding. Okay, great. So around the area, we do have waterways, we have creeks, uh, we have containers, I'm sure, that are full of water. Uh, what are some things that we should be looking out for? So those large waterways like Aliso Creek, and I know there's some wa water features on golf courses and common areas, our inspectors are out on routine basis inspecting and treating those. What we need residents to watch out for is those smaller sources and I just want people to be aware that even though the creek looks like it has algae and cattails it's still not breeding mosquitoes because we treat it we just don't change how it looks. Okay so what do you treat it with? We treat it with a bacteria product that targets mosquito larvae specifically it's called BTI and it's an organic product that uh, will provide long-term you know, control for those mosquitoes as we come out every couple of weeks to reinspect and, if needed, retreat it. So I wonder if ha we happen to have a dog that we let l drink that water. Does that affect them? No, this is actually a bacteria that's very specific to mosquitoes, so it doesn't affect other um, marine life in the creek as well as um, any animals that may you know ingest it. 
Oh, that's good to know because I'm sure they probably have their dogs maybe going along the creek there and sniffing that. So I mean, I wouldn't yeah. recommend drinking the creek water for pets, but if no, they but have to, there there shouldn't be a risk to that. Okay, and what else? Like standing water. I mean, I'm sure people have plants and little containers like that. Do you always recommend that there be drainage, or what's the best? Option? Yes, in the sense Laguna Woods Village is a large community with over 18,000 residents. It's almost like a small city in itself. And so uh, in walking around, you see large amounts of potted plants and saucers and all of those are breeding sources. So the easiest way is to make sure there's no water and that's either dumping them out weekly or creating proper drainage or not over watering to um, to prevent that standing water. Now, did you say that you're also treating our golf courses? Not in essence the whole golf course, but if there's any ponds in the golf courses or standing water that needs is has a potential to breed, we will train train those or any fountains that we find. Oh, okay, good. Because I yeah, there's fountains and things here too. But does it does it differ between like you even said the creek has them, but the, that's over on the sides. So what if you have a fountain that has uh, you know, water that's moving all the time. So if it's a running fountain or something that has moving water, the mosquitoes don't like to lay their eggs there and they won't be as productive and hatch, especially if it's filtered water. Um, and so in that case, you're okay. Moving water is great. Clean water is great. You won't have mosquito breeding. If you have a fountain that's very stagnant or you only run it once a week, then you may have an issue at some point. And that's easily drain it, scrub it, refill it up. Or you can even buy these products over the counter at any home improvement store and treat them yourself. Oh, I didn't know that. What are some things that we should look for in what, like places like Lowe's or Home Depot? Yes, yeah, so our website actually has a list of all the active products that are available for retail use, um, but it's, you know, BTI, Spinosad are some common products. Uh, some brands are mosquito dunks or mosquito granules. Uh, with the emergence of these new mosquitoes, there's a whole array of products available now in, you know, home improvement stores. That's great. And then you did mention that it's not harmful to other types of animals and marine life. So for instance, what if somebody had a pond and it was like in their yard, it won't hurt their fish, right? No. And if you have a larger source in your, for example, a pond, you can also request mosquito fish from us, which are voracious eaters of mosquito larvae. So we can put those in your pond and those will pro provide long-term control for your ponds. Oh, I had no idea that they even existed. So what are they again? They're fish? They're mosquito fish. They're close relation to the guppy, but we only place them in contained waterways because they're not native to our community. So we don't want to place them where there's other marine life um, that they could impact. So ponds, they typically will go into koi ponds or any kind of ornamental ponds and can provide long-term control. And I, I suppose they don't get very large. They don't. They're about an inch, an inch and a half. Okay, good, because you wouldn't want them to start eating the other fish. <laughs> they <laughs> won't. Um, your, your koi may eat them as snacks if you don't <laughs> properly feed them. And uh, they they are voracious eaters, though, so they will eat, can eat up to hundreds of larvae in a day. Wow, that's great. Ooh, what a yeah. great idea. So, so for them to live, though, it would have to be an environment that has algae, right? It couldn't just be a, a clear water thing. They can impact and, and live in cleaner water sources, but if you do have a filter on your pond and it's again has moving water, then you shouldn't have a mosquito breeding issue. Okay. But if you have a question on your pond, you can always call us and we'll come out and assess it for you. Oh, that's great. That's great. And then you did mention your website too. So there's a lot of resources on your website too that can help people understand. Yes, there's an exhaustive checklist for people to check their property as well as those products I mentioned and then video guides on how to uh, inspect your own property. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. Now, there is a campaign that you're doing right now. I, I see the little uh, thing in the background for you. Tell me what the campaign is all about. So our tip, toss, and take action campaign is really to engage our community uh, with 3.2 million residents in Orange County, we cannot get to every property. 
and we realized these newer mosquitoes, the 80s mosquitoes, um, breed in smaller sources. They only need a capful to provide a breeding, you know, cycle. And so we want our residents to tip out any containers, toss out any containers they don't need, and then take action by wearing repellent, making sure they're doing their weekly inspection and making it part of their routine. Now, the, the regular repellent that they can buy over the counter, will that take care of both types of mosquitoes that you mentioned? Yes, um, but I would urge people to look for EPA registered repellents. I know that some people prefer essential oils. Um, those have not been tested for efficacy, which means we don't know how well they work against mosquito bites, but the ones that have been registered have been tested and are known to work. Is it false that if I eat a lot of garlic, they won't bite me? <laughs> it's a, uh, a wise tale. So uh, it hasn't been tested to be proven correctly, but I always say if something is working for you, go ahead and continue doing it. But I would still encourage wearing repellent. <laughs> I just had to say that because I've had so many people go, oh, I ate garlic, so they're not going to bite me. <laughs> I mean, I think we all, a large portion eat garlic and still get bitten. So. <laughs> really, no kidding. No kidding. Well, lastly, is there anything else that you'd like to mention? I really just want to urge residents that you know you have a big community and it takes a community effort and it has to be a community effort to stop these mosquitoes from impacting your daily life and that includes looking for water tossing out water making sure your neighbors are doing their part as well and then wearing repellent when you're out it may not be your preferred choice but that's how you're going to prevent biting an excellent summary well thank you laura for the information we appreciate it as always and Soon enough, we'll get you back in the studio. Thank you, I appreciate your time. All right, thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this. Give mosquitoes a fighting chance. 